Greetings and salutations, all. Wow, it's been an exciting Posit Conf 2023. In fact, Joe Cheng uh, stole the show, in my personal opinion, with his keynote on running Shiny without a server. So basically, you can now run um, a Shiny application directly on GitHub uh, pages. So that's the GitHub IO. Um, just to emphasize that this isn't a GIF or anything like that. Let's just sort of uh, try changing options. Notice how as we change the sample count, right, the distribution is changing. And we can also quickly pause reactivity. So notice that right now we're no longer um, getting any updates. And if we uncheck the box, well, lo and behold, we now have updates. So this is really cool. And the second I saw it, I just sort of had to know um, how uh, it was actually happening behind the scenes. So it turns out um, that basically Joe presented three different options, convert, fiddle, and include. And what he was doing inside of his slide deck is largely this include option. So um, we're gonna go ahead and actually dive in and figure out how exactly this include statement happened um, in this video, uh, because, well, the shiny live package that George Stagg uh, uh, worked on, uh, along with uh, Barrett. Um, uh, absolutely outstanding, wonderful piece of uh, work, but it only really covered in the usage section how you can take an existing Shiny application um, that's in like a dot .app form or inside of a package and then sort of um, uh, put it into this new Shiny Live format. So on that end, uh, right, I really want to sort of focus a lot more of the uh, attention on include instead of um, what was shown in the documentation of convert. Okay, so everything that we're going to talk about, it's all in this one repository uh, called our shiny live demo. And I was basically knocking this out last night uh, up till 2.38 a.m. Um, content is just sort of all there. So if you're not a YouTube video fan, definitely go ahead and check it out. Um, if you're interested in continuous integration, uh, there's even a section over um, in the documentation on that or the tutorial. So lots to cover, lots to do. With that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So what I'm going to have us do is immediately jump into our studio. And inside of our studio, we're going to go over to the lower left-hand side where you see that console. And we're going to go ahead and just type install.packages, uh, parentheses, quotations. And then we're going to install the pack package. Uh, pack is a, a modern version of um, install.packages. Uh, and it's really useful if you're trying to work with remote packages. So that said, uh, let's type out pack, colon, colon, pack. Um, and then say posit dash dev forward slash r dash shiny live. So this command is going to go uh, onto posit dash devs github page, download r shiny live, um, and basically install it. It's exactly like remotes uh, uh, install underscore github, if you're familiar with that. So uh, that's part one. Part two is we actually have to create here um, a Quarto project. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go over into the terminal tab and we're going to go ahead inside of that terminal tab and type Quarto space create space project space and then I'm gonna just request a default project. So when I press enter, uh, we're then going to be prompted for uh, a directory name. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna say r-shiny-live-demo. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And what's going to happen here is our studio is going to open a new version and it's gonna take us right on in uh, to sort of this demo environment, okay? Uh, so it's a brand new project that just opened um, uh, away from the old version. So over here, we have three files. The first file here, this underscore quarto.yaml, that's a really important file to have when you're working with Shiny Live. It basically describes the Quarto project. The next part here is this rshinylivedemo.qmd. This is where we're going to actually put the include logic. And then lastly, we have this .r project 
That's just if we wanted to reopen this R Shiny Live demo project um, directly inside of R Studio. Okay, so that's sort of this default skeleton that exists. But we actually have to add uh, another piece of software. And that piece of software here is um, going to require us to go back into Terminal. And inside of Terminal, we're going to install a Quarto extension by saying Quarto space add space. In this case, um, I believe it's going to be Quarto dash ext forward slash shiny live which is basically going to go ahead and download here the Shiny Live extension for Quarto. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and say yes. And then we're going to say yes again. Um, and lo and behold, we now have the Shiny Live application for Quarto uh, downloaded and installed inside of this uh, underscore extensions folder. So if I really quickly click in underscore extensions, Notice how I have Quarto extension, which is the GitHub organization name. And then one more down, lo and behold, Shiny Live. Uh, this is what uh, allows us to really um, do some magical things. So we're going to go ahead and jump back uh, now using the breadcrumb to the R Shiny Live dash demo, uh, which is, again, the project uh, repository. And then we're going to go over into the console in the top left. Um, just to sort of move us away from that terminal. So with that said, uh, the next part here is also to open up this Quarto document. So inside of this Quarto document, you have placeholder text. We're gonna go ahead and delete it. We're gonna keep the title. Um, and we're also going to add in this case filters, and then we're going to do colon, and then uh, this little uh, minus sign, uh, and we're going to say shiny live. And then we're going to save the document. You can either use the little file drive or command S or control S up to you. It's really important that we add this filters shiny live component as it basically lets Quarto know that it has to run an extension on this file in order for the output to be generated. The next part here, uh, I'm going to go over to where that um, sort of GitHub repository page is, is we need to create a very special code chunk. So the code chunk sort of looks a little bit like this, um, right? So here, uh, instead of R, right, we're going to say shiny live and then dash R. Um, inside of this code chunk, we're also going to use a cell option called standalone. And then we're going to say that's true. So basically that means that only one shiny application um, uh, with all of its parts are going to be contained inside of this code cell. Um, from there, right, uh, what we need here is we just sort of need uh, a UI and a server component, and then the familiar Shiny app creation statement at the end. That's it. That's it. You can add your own logic. You can do anything that you want, but that alone will basically um, embed a shiny application that does not require a server in a Quarto document, which is really cool. That's all that's needed. But I, I promised you here that we would actually go and use Joe's example. So if we very quickly jump over into uh, Joe's slide deck, right, we can sort of scroll down a little bit and we can see exactly the code that Joe is using. So we're just going to go ahead and gently copy out that code. So just highlight all of these wonderful lines. Oops. Highlight all of the lines. And then uh, Control C. And then we're going to jump back into um, our studio. And we're going to just gently replace that bare bones skeletal template with, in this case, uh, Joe's code. We'll go ahead and save the document by going up to the floppy or Control or Command S. And now what we're going to do is we're going to press this magic button called render. All right, so let's press the render button. And what's going to happen here is in the background jobs tab, basically we have the entire Quarto document being rendered. And then we're being told, you know, uh, we can expect a live preview on this .html. So what then happens is on the right hand side, uh, you can sort of see here 
uh, on the right hand side that there was a viewer panel that opened and something was you know trying to set itself up but it didn't quite set itself up i think this is just a slight hiccup and bug um with uh how the viewer panel in our studio is, is designed i have total faith that the r studio id team is going to totally knock this out of the park and, and fix that for a, a, a later release uh, again we're just 24 hours from this being uh, made generally available but um, if you go up to where you see show a new window so that right next to that x button click that show a new window what happens is you're going to be taken to that same url that i showed you running the background job except in this time inside of your web browser and you're seeing here again this loading symbol of the app and what ends up happening is we can now actually see the app uh, taking um, taking uh, flight so this is just really cool i mean you can't go wrong with how cool this looks uh, at least that's that's my personal opinion um so where where is there a slight hiccup though um right now the slight hiccup is it seems with um this specific you know um control option so the sample count uh, and just to emphasize that this is you know basically definitely a shiny app that's running and not a gif right you're just seeing us mess with the counts we'll go ahead and pause that real quick add more and then pause again and you know you can see it's it's paused so there's there's one one issue here right and that is just it looks like the app is being cut off so what i found uh specifically uh, to handle that is if we go back in uh, to this quarto document and we go ahead and type format colon html colon and then we say grid uh, colon and then body dash with colon and then we're going to set this to like let's say 140 pixels or so um uh, i need two yes two so uh spacing matters so here you're just seeing two spaces two spaces in um this is basically going to allow the shiny app to have an adequate amount of room um, so that if when we go back in over on this browser, right, um, the full app should sort of be shown um, in the video. Is that's my hope. We'll we'll see how this plays out. So it it works. Uh, you know, we we see a lot more of the app now um, with the control widget being present, right? And if we close the control widget, we see all of it. So this is just one of those minor uh, components right now. Uh, it looks as if that'll get smoothed out as more versions of Shiny Live come into play. So this again, super cool um, in terms of what's possible. Uh, let's really quickly jump back into our studio though and go over into this files tab. So underneath the files tab, we have three sort of files that were added that are equally as important. Uh, the first one here is the rendered output files, so the r-shinylive-demo files. The next one is the .html, uh, so that's what we were seeing inside of the browser and the viewer panel. And then the last one uh, that we have is the shinylive-service worker. So this shinylive service worker always has to be with these rendered files. Um, and as it stands right now, there's also another gentle bug um i hate to say this but there is another bug and that bug here basically is with the extension um uh, html dependencies uh, not automatically being added to the resources key so what we're going to do over here is um, also underneath html uh, we're going to just sort of add this resources key and what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, shiny live dash sw.js. Uh, and that's going to make sure that if we wanted to go and publish it you, onto GitHub pages, or we wanted to publish it onto Quarto Pub or another publishing platform like Netlify or something like that, um, everything should just automatically be sent all together, um, is, is what I would say. But 
that's that's shiny live. It's 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 crazy. We no longer actually need a shiny server. We don't need a license anymore to actually deploy shiny apps or a compute server. It's it's mind blowing. It's so cool, Bob. So um, I hope you you can you know check it out and um, let me know uh, either on socials or you know GitHub uh, what you guys think. Um, so thanks for watching. Bye.